the director of research through people. Our video, What Do Taylor Swift, Richard Gere and I Have in Common, generated a lot of comments. <laughs> the answer is that we're distant cousins who had an ancestor who sailed on the Mayflower in 1620. So here at Research Through People we get a lot of questions about distant cousins. So today we're releasing an update about how custom cousins become distant and what we can do about that and, and how that helps us using Taylor Swift as an example. Like all cousins, Taylor Swift's genealogy and mine is the same from our most re co recent common ancestor back in time. Clearly you and your first cousins will have many more ancestors in common than perhaps your more distant cousins, but we can help to bring those ancestors to life for you. Most of us know who our first cousins are, but gradually at the second cousin level and so forth, we have less contact. They probably now live many, many miles away from where we are. Now, I said our ancestor, Richard Warren, was on the Mayflower. So there's an actor dressed up as Richard Warren in the Plymouth Plantation in America. Um, and uh, so he went across on his own on the Mayflower. He had a wife and five young daughters and he left them behind and they didn't join him until 1623. Um, and then they had another couple of sons in Plymouth, including Nathaniel Warren, Taylor Swift and my most recent common ancestor. So Taylor Swift's family tree and mine show that her ancestor, Richard Watt, <coughs> if we look, look here, there we have Nathaniel Warren, he's born in Plymouth, and he has a, a number of children after he got married, including Taylor's ancestor, Alice Warren, who was born in 1656, and my ancestor, Mercy, born the following year. You can imagine two girls just a year apart, they must have spent a lot of time uh, during their childhood. But all things not necessarily come to end but grow. So Alice Warren was the first to get married to Thomas Gibbs um, in 1674 in Sandwich, which was about 20 miles south of Plymouth. And we'll look at a map in a moment. Mercy got married um, in 1677. She married Jonathan Delano in what was then Dartmouth, you would now know as Fairhaven. That was 30 miles south of Plymouth. So already Alice and Mercy's families were apart. And you can imagine with transport as it was in those days, you wonder if they ever met, and certainly not very often you would think. Now, Alice's daughter, Abigail Gibbs, stayed in the area, but then her son, Nathaniel Gibbs, moved more than 100 miles west to Litchfield in Connecticut. Meanwhile, Mercy's son, Thomas, stayed in Dartmouth. So already they're 100 miles apart. Um, now, what's intriguing when you look at things is where there are coincidences. Both of their grandsons were made captains, but of very different types. Nathaniel Gibbs became a captain of the second company of the train band and militia in Hartford, Connecticut. That was in 1755. Thomas Delano moved to Nantucket Island, south of what we know now know as Massachusetts. <clears throat> and in 1760, he became a whaling captain. And his son, Captain Henry Delano, emigrated to England in 1785, putting many, many miles between Taylor's descendants and mine. So we live thousands of miles apart now. But even though you've never heard of these families, already I hope you found it interesting. There's a story there, and that's one of the joys of researching our ancestors. By the way, if you have any questions about this or anything else, please feel free to get in touch. And what's intriguing is there's always something left behind, we would hope. Now here's a map of uh, Massachusetts and Connecticut and we can see the sort of movements. There's Plymouth, they moved, the Gibbs moved down to Sandwich, the Delano's moved to Dartmouth, then the Gibbses finally move across 100 miles to Litchfield and Hartford in Connecticut. The Delano's go over to Nantucket Island and eventually Captain Henry Delano comes over to England. But 
What have they left behind them? Well, a gravestone, and it's remarkable in this case, Jonathan Delano's gravestone is still there in Fairhaven, even though that's nearly, well, it's 1720, that's 300 years ago in this year, 2020. Nathaniel Swift died a bit later, but his gravestone is still there. So you can go and see and in a sense, touch your ancestors. So you and your distant cousins share some of your family history. If you'd like to know more about this, um, have a look at the Research Through People webpage, Ancestor Footsteps, which talks about various aspects of this, including family reunions, when in a sense, distant cousins get together. And that may give you some ideas. In my own family, we finally made contact with a third cousin who had the family Bible from back in the early 1800s. We didn't even know this existed, but of course it gave us a lot of information and tangible contact with the past we knew nothing about. So if we're going to make a, uh, instead of making contact with living relatives, we're going to make a future video about that. So if you'd like to know more, please get in touch for a free consultation. There are our contact details. We've got a load of videos and blogs which may be of interest to you in various ways um, and uh, can hopefully help you find out more or get in touch with us and we will help you. And to return to Taylor Swift, you may know her song. I wonder if her and me will ever, ever, ever be getting together.